Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Conn Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A M P I R E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. Don't forget, you can always read my work on ESPN.com. I'm going to have a story up. I think it's going to be up Thursday about the commander's options with the number two pick. Stay put, trade back, trade up. Somewhat kind of looking at the pros and cons of each. And or you know, basically, I listed them in the order of which I think it'll occur. Anyways, that'll be on ESPN.com. Also, if you missed my interview with Washington Commander Safety Jeremy Reeves, Go back and give that a listen. It was a really good interview. And I don't say that because of me. I say that because of him. He was very insightful. I think you'll learn a lot. And if you didn't like him before, you're probably going to really like him now. But I think you'll understand why teams wanted to, the, why this organization wanted to keep him around through a couple different regimes and likely will bring him back for a third regime. For Think about this. A guy who is a practice squad guy has stuck around for three regimes. Why is that? Listen to the interview. And I think you'll understand why they want him, in addition to the fact that he's a very, very good special teams player. So there you go. That's my little two cents. In a minute, I'm going to get to, or in a couple minutes, I'm going to get to some of, taking a look at Washington's own free agents, what I think is going to happen with a lot of them. I'm not going to go over every one of them because they have a ton, but I wanted to go over some notable ones just to kind of give you an idea of what I think is going to happen. And I don't, you know, in some cases, it's it's a little bit of an educated guess. In some cases, it's more of a informed guess. Anyways, before I get to that point, I do want to talk about to, on the the signing today. I mean, well, I'm ta- I'm recording this as of Wednesday, but the signing of tight end Zach Ertz to a one year deal worth up to five million dollars. So, what do I think of this move? First of all, they needed to sign a tight end after releasing Logan Thomas. This this he's still going to come in under what they would have paid Thomas. And in fact, like I said, last week, they saved over about six and a half million when they cut Thomas. So this is a, he's a much more, you know, in a, a position where you don't want to spend a ton. He's an affordable player. What does he have left? He of course has been around for a little bit. He was, he's 33 years old and he's coming off the, the last two years where he's been hurt, but he was playing in Arizona last year, caught 27 passes in seven games. A difficult situation for any pass catcher considering the changes at quarterback. I mean, they guy worked with Colt McCoy in the summertime. Then Josh Dobbs is starting the first game after having just gotten there. And so I think, you know, be curious. See, I'm going to go back and look at the tape to see what he was doing. I don't want to tell you what he was doing. I know what I heard, but I'm going to want to watch it for myself to see, was he still getting open and, and what was going on there the year before he was having a really good year. He had 47 catches in 10 games, that was on a really good pace for a guy um, who's been around for a little while. So I think, you know, the, the, I think he can still play. It sounds like Kings cliff Kingsbury who had him in Arizona really likes him. It's a, it's a good low cost veteran signing. This is where I, it's kind of what I talked to you about the other day with, with or I talked to club members about this with about Tyron Smith. Do you go out and sign guys in their early thirties? I think if you sign them to one year deals, I think that can be a very effective signing because it doesn't tie up future money and you don't want to give guys who are in their mid to you know early to mid thirties, multi-year contracts, unless they're still producing at a certain level and they're, and they're not getting hurt a lot. Right. So I think this is a good signing because it's a one-year deal and he's shown in Arizona that he can still be effective, stay healthy. And I think it'll work out for them. I would still go out and draft another tight end. They also have Cole Turner. They also have Armani Rogers. But I would still go out and draft a tight end. They have enough picks to do that. And whether it's, you know, there are a couple of intriguing guys in the first few rounds that you could go target if you wanted to. To And they also have John Bates, right? So, but he, of course, he is more of a blocker, but he's also been more of a, an effective pass catcher than, than Cole Turner. Anyway, I would still go look to go out and get another guy. And I would expect, you know, I would expect, um, Ertz to be used. I know um, probably a lot in the slot as a tight end in the slot. That's a good role for him. Um, has the book on him is that he's one of the, you know, one of the harder workers on the team. So that's always a good thing to add. And I think if you're looking at what the, what Washington is trying to add in free agency, it's guys who guys like this guys who can, you're going to hate this word, but who can change the culture. Right. And by that, I mean, I'm not talking about like, you know, 
whatever. Take, if you would plan the culture game, take a drink. But I'm just talking about like in just with getting guys in who work a certain way, who have a certain approach, who, who, and, you know, tough and all that. So I think that's when you're looking for guys that they're going to sign, it's not going to be the Zach Browns of the world or the, or guys like that. It's going to be guys more like this and guys who just have a certain reputation uh, of being, you know, good, tough, hard-nosed players who can still play. Anyway, so I think it's, you know, again, a low cost, low risk signing. And, but I would not, I would continue to look for another tight end mainly because I'm not sold on the young depth and I like Armani Rogers, but I, you know, we don't know what he's going to do. We don't know what he's going to do in this offense. We don't know what the staff thinks of him. So continue to look for guys to add at that position, especially in the draft. So let's get to some of what's going on with Frenzy. Now, I think there are some guys, I, and I, you heard Jeremy Reeves. I do think Reeves will be back. Um, they really like him, and he wants to be here. Always a good combination. But let's get into some of the other uh, position players that are that are notable. Starting with Cam Curl. Now, they there was con- there has been contact between the two sides. How long? How much dialogue is going back and forth? I don't. I don't know exactly. I do know there's been certainly been dialogue. We do know that Cam and would have liked to have had a contract extension done last off season. That was the expectation. We heard that a lot that they wanted to get curl done and they wanted to get Montez sweat done before the season didn't happen. And part of that was due to the change in ownership, but for curl, I don't, I do think it kind of personally, I think it tweaked him a little bit um, just observing it and listening, I, you know, cause you, you want to be a, you, you feel like you're a key part of this team. You want to be a part of the future. And while you can look and say, well, it makes sense because of this, because the owner, blah, blah, for them, like what, what guys in his spot know is like, well, they signed some of these other guys before and you know, do you want me to stick around or not? Anyway, it's a new regime. So what, what, you know, I, I know that he would like to be here, but I think you also want to get your value. Now, it's very possible he gets to free agency. I think it's going to be hard if you let a guy like that to get to free agency. If he if he feels a certain way, they might just say, well, then I'm gone. And I think we saw, we've seen that with other players in the past. Now, Trent Williams wasn't quite in that mold because he had the health stuff going on and he was upset about some other things. But I think once he made his mind up that he was going to leave, then he was going to leave. And I, I don't know that Cam Curl's in that spot. I think if they all made him the right offer, I think he'd stay. I think you want to be valued. That's what everybody wants to know. But I think the question is, where is what is the value of that position for him? That's a tough one. I asked, I asked one, one, uh, one, one coach in the NFL about about him, and they thought his value was around that eight million dollar range. And other people, I think. You know, I could see it getting to between maybe the eight to 10, just because it's free agency and there's more money, but that was the looking at like, so when you start to look at like 13, 14, 15, though, that, that money is going to be given out to guys who are making plays for the most part. Now, if somebody's going to give it to them more power to cam curl, because I guess I've always told you, I really like what he can do. I think he adds a lot. I'm not sure exactly what his side is looking for. And I think that may be why Washington maybe lets him get, either two frames you certainly go through the tampering period which starts on monday just to see what is it that teams are willing to do for him that will help them maybe give him the offer that he needs from here so but you know but i don't but i don't know what's going to happen i don't i don't i don't i'm not going to lean particularly hard one way or another um i do think that if you let him get to frame that I would put the odds greater that he's gone, but I don't, I can't say that for sure because I don't know what he's going to see if the offers would be close with another team. And then how does Washington respond? The other thing to keep in mind, if you're Washington, yes, they have money to spend. They're not going to just spend it in a, I don't want to say reckless, but they're not just going to give anybody whatever they want because, oh, you got it. You want it to be smart deals because you are building for the long term. And what you can also do is, You can also build around your the guys that you already have. You have Derek Forrest. I think his play style is going to be something that this staff likes. You have, of course, Quan Martin, whom they drafted last year. And I know this staff seems to like him. 
And then you, if you, you know, then, then it depends on what do you think of Percy Butler? Do you have to, how much do you have to spend to keep a guy that while, listen, we all think he's a good player. You know, what is the value of that for them? You have to try and think like them. And, you know, that's, that's where it's gonna be. But I, listen, they've been very complimentary towards curl. So I don't think it's a matter of, they don't want him. I think it's going to be a matter of how each side values the player. And, and can you come to some sort of resolution? That's kind of contract negotiation one-on-one, right? But I think in this case, that's definitely where it is. And again, the, the coach that I told you about really likes cam curl. So in, when he pegged his value at around 8 million, that's not me talking and that's somebody else talking. So whether or not it stays there, I don't know. Um, I do know like Grant Delpit from Cleveland signed a deal in December. He's getting 12 million per year. He's had six interceptions in three years. The problem for Cam is that he hasn't had an interception since 2020. He had three that year, but that's been it. And, you know, there's a lot, again, there's a lot that he does well, but is it, you know, where's the value at Tyron Matthew um, in 2022 got 8.33 per year. Von Bell last year, seven and a half per year. He's had, um, and he's a little bit older than he's like 29. I think he is now. So he's a little bit older. Amani Hooker a um, couple of years ago, two years ago, got 10 per year. But the other problem is you have other guys available. Quandre Diggs is now available. Jordan Poyer now available. And so you have more safeties in the market. And then the other thing that was eye-opening to me before the season, Jerry Fowler from ESPN always does a top 10 at each top 10 position or top 10 players at each position list for ESPN plus in the summertime. And he talks to coaches, executives, and players for this. There were 22 safeties named for this list that, of, that guys considered a top 10 safety. 22 players received a vote for that. Cam did not. Now, what does that mean? Well, you know, I don't know that. I, I mean, I wouldn't have put him as a top 10 guy because I just don't think you have the big plays. I do think he's a very good player. Or I think he's a good player and, and, and has been a good fit in Washington. I think he would do a really good job in Dan Quinn's defense. Again, the question will be, can they get to that price? And, and I would be a little bit leer, you know, wary of letting him get to free agency but maybe that tampering period will be enough to clean it up to get it to a point. I also think this is by the time you hear this, some of these things could could be evolving. So this is not gospel. It's just what I think based on what I know on March 6th. There you go. So this again, this could change by Friday. Anyway, let's get to the next one. Um, Cody Barton, I think there's, you know, he was here on a one-year deal. I think there's been somewhat, it sounds like tepid interest. Um you know, they need to get somebody next to, to Jamin Davis. I know like people have talked about Patrick queen from Baltimore he's going to be an expensive guy. And so I don't, I wouldn't see that, but I don't, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of momentum with Cody Barton. I think you can go get another guy. I think one guy I would watch would be a guy like Orrin Burks, just because there's familiarity with him with, with Adam Peters and he can help, he can help whether it's starter depth, special team. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with him. But I. But the point is, I think I don't. It sounds like again tepid interest for for Barton, Curtis Samuel. I I don't. I have a hard time seeing him come back. Um, don't know that for sure, but it it certainly feels like it's trending that way. Um, so, but he. I think he was a solid player here once he got through that injury first year. Kendall Fuller again another solid player. Um, but he's going to be what 29 he's got, he's had dealt with knee injuries can still play. And I think, you know, one thing is someone else told me like, if they want a ball Hawk in that defense, then Fuller has been doing that lately. But um, you know, I think there's also, it's it going to be interesting because there's going to be a few guys and we'll get into this in later episodes from Dallas, who I think could fit a lot of what this team might want. You're not going to go out and sign every one of these guys from Dallas, but there are a couple of guys that whether it's a defensive end whether it's at, at cornerback or even safety, that might make sense because they know Dan Quinn's system and, or, and, and, and wit and, and just is, is important. So, um, but again, not this, these aren't firm, but that's if I had to guess right now. Antonio Gibson, hard to see that. Hasn't been much momentum at all there. Um, I think other teams have been interested. And I think, he, to be honest, I think he's probably going to want to go somewhere else, even though there's a big change here. 
I think sometimes you may just want the change of scenery, not because he hated it here or anything like that, but I think, I think he got, I think he kind of got tired of hearing this year, they're going to use him like this, this year, you're going to use him like this and then not have seeing it unfold that way. Um, and it's funny because I think he might be a good fit in this, but the other thing is for this team, I think you could go find a running back in the draft that you could use in that as a third back with Brian Robinson and Chris Rodriguez. Um, I see the other two that I think are interesting is Casey Tuhill and James with Williams. Definitely. I believe that I mean, they've talked to both, both sides. And so I can definitely see one, at least one of them back. And it wouldn't shock me if both of them are back, even if it's just in backup roles, they did draft KJ Henry and Andre Jones last year to, to hopefully in their eyes, move up to become key backups. I don't know with Jones still very raw. I think KJ Henry showed some flashes that maybe he could develop into a rotational guy, you know, and, but I think with, with two Hill, it's, to me, it's interesting because I think he's got, I think he's got some athleticism that will allow him to be a little bit more versatile in what they ask him to do in a Dan Quinn slash wit defense. And I know that there have been times during the past where it's a lot of it was, you know, trying to rush as a bull rush. You're trying to use the bull rush, bull rush, bull rush. But I think he's got a pretty good get off where you could see maybe him using a slightly more enhanced role um, in Dan Quinn. And so I think it may be a better fit for him than it was even the last couple of years. So I could see him back. And James Smith Williams, I think, offers that versatility as well because we have seen him. He can he plays pretty strong point of attack. Um, and he can he can also play inside. So it wouldn't shock me um, which would to see one of them come back. I wouldn't even guess which one, you know, maybe I think just because of the I think of of two hills ability to rush the passer better, maybe gives him a little bit more of an edge. But you also could, you know, but again, both guys can help because both guys have helped. Um, I know Jacoby Brissett don't see that one. Um, Joey Sly haven't heard a whole lot there, but they need a kicker. So it would make sense if you resign him because he's here and he's got a strong leg. And so it would that, you know, but, but nothing guaranteed there Jabril Cox restricted free agent. And a lot of people ask about him all the time because he was, I guess, a name player. And, but keep in mind, Dallas was okay. Letting him go. So who was the defensive coach in Dallas? Dan Quinn. I don't think that Jabril Cox will be back here next year. Um, another guy like Cornelius Lucas, not sure there again, would be a fine backup, but you know, they, they have, and, and they have so many needs, um, but I'm not quite sure what's going to happen there. I just wanted to kind of go over some of the big ones. And there's, again, you can tell there's nothing, very few are where you feel like it's a guarantee Um I think Curl's the most interesting one just because of his status. And so again, if they can agree to something that that would be very good for them, but I don't think they're going to break the bank for anybody and any one player in particular. And I don't think you have to break the bank for him. Um, so I think that would be, I think it's just a matter of, again, realizing what the value is for the player. All right, folks, that's it for me. Go back and listen to my interview with Jeremy Reeves. I'm telling you, the guy is really good to listen to. So um, go back and do me a, go back, do me a favor and do that. So anyway, that's it for me. I'll be back on Friday with another episode, getting closer and closer to free agency. So there will be a lot of moves. We don't know how many. Don't think there'll be any big splashes, but there will be a lot of moves. So I'll talk to you next time.